Catfield. I'm joined by our Aston Villa reporter here at the Express and Star, Mr. Matt Mayer. Matt, Aston Villa, they had a target at the start of the season, it was promotion. This might not be the route that they've intended to go down, but they've got Borough now, playoff semi finals. Will they be fancying themselves? I don't think there's any reason why not. Um, yeah, you're quite right. That's the target at the start of the season was, was automatic promotion for you know, they've missed out on that because, you know, for for one reason or another they just weren't quite consistent enough yeah. through the course of the season. Uh, Steve Bruce had a points target which if they'd have hit it, uh, they they would have, you know, as we know looking at the final table, they would they would have gone up but they fell they fell short of it. Um, but the playoffs, uh, you know, as Colin Caldwell described this week, a bit of an insurance policy. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's the, the the cliche is to say it's a lottery. I suppose in some respects that's correct because, you know, we saw a couple of years ago with Brighton mm-hmm. uh, in their, their their playoff semi final suffering three injuries. I think in the first half of the the first leg at Sheffield Wednesday. You yeah. know, things like that can happen, but ultimately it comes. You know, the best team over the next two weeks is gonna is gonna win. And and Villa really, I don't think they've got anything really to to fear mm. if if they perform to the level that we know they can. Yeah. The level we saw against Wolves, the level the level we've seen really for you know since they last played Middlesbrough yeah. in December, with some obvious exceptions, they have been one of the form teams in the division. Only Fulham uh, were, were in better form uh, mm. than Villa since the, the, the turn of the year, so. You know, it, it's there to be won. You know, this this really is where you know, as we've been saying for for weeks, you know, Villa's experience, the, the, the big game players they've got that, that thrive in that kind of you know big you know big atmosphere, that rarefied atmosphere, as, as mm-hmm. Colin Caldwell has, has, has described it. This is where they should come come into play. This is where they should thrive. That's it, because I mean, we didn't see a lot of these these big players feature in the last league game of the season. Of course, playing Millwall, a bit of a dead rubber. Now they'll be coming back. Well, the likes of John Terry, his experience, obviously played in some huge games. But then also the likes of El Mahamedy, people who have played under Bruce in these big games before. Is that going to be one of the big telling points for this Villa squad? This should. This this is what we're saying. This this should work in Villa's favour if you go through the, you know, the the starting eleven that we, we would expect at uh, Middlesbrough. There's only, um, I think Sam Johnston and. Um, you know, I think Sam Johnson hasn't played at, uh, at Wembley, mm-hmm. but it, but everybody else has got experience of of, of Wembley finals, of big games. You're quite right, El Mahamedy, mm-hmm. uh, Robert Snodgrass won promotion through the playoffs with Hull two years ago, yes. st- managed by by Steve Bruce. Lewis Grabbins won promotion through the playoffs. He's he's been in this situation before. Albert Adoma won promotion with Middlesbrough. You know. Played in, in, in big games. Kota Hurahan, Captain Barnsley, to the promotion through the League One playoffs mm-hmm. two years ago. Um, you know, the list the list really does does go on. Um, this this is where this this experience now should should come into play. Mm-hmm. It's uh, you know the, the, there aren't many players in that Villa side who, who don't know about the big stage. Who don't know kind of what is required. The thing with the playoffs is it's very it's very different to everything that's come before. Mm-hmm. It's cup football, effectively two legged tie, and then and then the final. So the, the dynamics do change, and a lot will come down to how they approach this this first leg on Saturday. Yeah, you know, second leg at Villa Park. We've seen some terrific you know atmospheres at, at Villa Park this season with you know, full house. It's going to be another you know another full house. You would really fancy if Villa is still well in this tie mm-hmm. at the end of Saturday. You know, if they get a, a, a draw, I think it, on Saturday would be a, a good result for them because you would back them at home. You know, mm-hmm. we saw what happened against Wolves. Nobody else did that to, you know, to Wolves. They they beat Cardiff. Yeah. They obviously got you know last month. You know, in, in another you know game where there was at the time plenty on the line. They still had a, a faint hopes of automatic promotion. So, mm-hmm. you know, when when the, the when when it's come to the crunch this season, you know, in in big games, you know. It's uh, Villa have usually produced, so mm-hmm. that should that should give them confidence. I have to say, I think Middlesbrough are tough opponents, but I think it's a really you know, it's always big you know, so it's always big clubs in the in, you know in, in the playoffs by and large, and, and mm-hmm. it really is a you know, for the neutral. I think it's a fantastic, fantastic lineup. I think Fulham Derby's going to got the potential to be an absolutely cracking you know two legged tie, and, mm-hmm. and don't rule out Derby. Um, you know they they seem to have hit four. Villa, we've said they've got this 
you know, good record against Middlesbrough this season. Yeah, conceded a goal, won up there uh, in December. Uh, a game that really turned for the season. Mm. Uh, Steve Bruce was under huge pressure before that game. Had they lost up there, you know, who knows what might have uh, what might have happened. But they got a got the win. It turned the season round. I've got to point out, of course, Middlesbrough now a very different side. Yeah, uh, under Tony Pulis, he's had four or five months to to get his kind of, you know. Get things working there, mm-hmm. so uh, so it, it, it's all set up really, you know, for for a, for a cracking cracking time. Yeah, and obviously we get team news Friday now. Is there any questions or headaches that Steve Bruce might have heading into it? Do you reckon? Yeah, I'm not sure in terms of uh, of headaches. I think mm-hmm. you, you referenced the, the Millwall game there. Um, the the disappointment from that game, and um, we'll make one thing clear: mm-hmm. the game was ir- ir- irrelevant for Villa. Yeah, it was the only game this season where there's been absolutely nothing riding on it, and we saw from the changes that were made that look, it was just a case of, you know, let's just get through the game. Let's yeah. win, you know, get, get a positive result if we can. But some of the fringe players, you know, the likes of Jonathan Codger who's just come back from injury, that was mm-hmm. his chance to say, you know, uh, you know, to to give Bruce something to think about ahead yeah. of Saturday. Oh, I don't think he did that, and I don't think any of the other fringe players, with the possible exception of Josh Onema, yeah. who I think is really coming to you know, some some good form um, in the last few weeks, really did enough to say, you know, get get the manager thinking. Oh, mm. I think we we can generally have a decent guess at the starting eleven. You know, Neil Taylor's probably the biggest yeah. injury concern, though not really a concern because Alan Hunt has been the the first choice left back for much of the season. He's fit again. Mm-hmm. He should play on Saturday. Berkeley Bjarnason was was not involved again at the weekend. We yeah. expect him to be to be back in the mix, and and that really is the biggest problem. Is the biggest question is Villa play this four one four one kind of system mm-hmm. with a, a deep sitting midfielder. It's either Bjarnason, Glenn Whelan, or Yedinak. The probably the biggest question mark is who plays in that role. Mm. Um, that's probably the biggest decision to make. I, I fancy it'll be Glenn Whelan because yeah. I think he's. You know, he's shown some of his best form of the season in the last month since since coming back from injury. Um, you know, he had a dip in the middle of the season. Yeah. Uh, you know, was out of form. You know, Bjarnason came in, did very well. Yedinak, you know, he's there in a certain style of game. He, mm-hmm. he can be excellent. You know, he's a bit of big influence. But I think Whelan might just get the nod. That's probably the biggest question mark at this stage. But obviously, we'll get more information on Friday when. They have the uh, the pre match press conference. Yep. So a big old week for Aston Villa uh, pre match press conference on Friday. We'll have coverage of both semi final games and of course if they make it to the final then coverage of the final as well. So make sure you stick with us here at expressandstar.com. <laughs>